Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we started doing some things around here. We ended up making the blast furnace. We went to the nether. We died. Yeah, all that kind of stuff happened. Uh, we ended up making this engineer's workbench. We were trying to make pr progress in the immersive engineering section. I was kind of taking a look at some of these quests and what we have left to do and what's next. Uh, I was looking at the garden cloche because that's a pretty powerful item. Uh, you provide it power, you give it water and fertilizer, and it grows crops internally. Yeah, it's like grows crops regardless of the time of day, light level, any of that stuff. Uh, but unfortunately, the garden cloche apparently is missing a recipe at this point in time in the mod pack, at least in Kappa mode. Uh, I'm sure that'll be fixed. I'm pretty sure that's a uh, that's a bug and it's been reported. So yeah, that'll be fixed in the future. Um, but anyway, I was kind of looking at the quests and what we have to do next. And yeah, we can do things like making these different wires and stuff. We have the steel. We can make the electrum. And what else do we have here? Yeah, the LV stuff that is copper wires. So it does require us to make like either shears or the engineer's wire cutters. And I think the wire cutters are better. I think. Pretty sure they are. They might not be. Actually, I, I, I don't know. I'm just making this all up as I go. But it's fine. So let's grab some iron and we'll grab two sticks and we will make ourselves the engineer's wire cutter. There we go. So we got that little guy. Cool. So to make this stuff, we need to get ourselves copper coil, which does require us to have titanium. Uh oh, I didn't actually look at this. Uh, titanium. So how do we get titanium? Titanium, titanium. So we need titanium or dust. Uh oh. Uh, that might be a problem, actually. Uh, oh, there's titanium pieces, and that comes from, ah, crushed netherrack. Okay, not so much a problem. Iron or diamond. Iron gives you a 9% chance for it. Yeah, and we get some other stuff, so that is definitely something that we can't do. Now, we have to get some crushed netherrack. We did bring some netherrack back from the nether. I should have crushed it while I was there, but on the other hand... I didn't really know we needed it crushed. I'm going to take some of these diamonds that we have, and we're just going to make ourselves a better hammer. I'm tired of using the stone ones. We can make all the stone ones we want for free, but this one is just going to last so much longer, and I think it'll be worth it at this point. Like, we can pretty much get diamonds if we just grind for them just by, you know, taking our cobblestone and then turning it into gravel with our hammer and then sifting it, right? Like, it does take a little bit of time to get it, but I feel like it's worth it. Anyway... So now that we have that, let's go ahead and grab our diamond wand. Yeah, we'll just set down an eight by eight. Like so, that's eight long, and we'll make it eight this way, which I think is right there, and then one more on top. This is set to horizontal only. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Uh, there we go, no lock, there we go, no more. Uh, another rack of my inventory, and then we can just go ahead and boop it like that. So there's two stacks of crushed, another rack, and then look at that. Like, hardly use any durability on this hammer. It's so much better. I think the uh, stone hammer, we would have had to make like two or three of them. Anyway, so now that we have this, we can just go ahead and crush, or I guess sift our crushed nether rack. And yeah, there we go. There's a titanium ore piece. So let me go ahead and finish this up real quick so we can get some of the titanium to make progress here, and we'll be right back. All right, so I ended up doing another two stacks of nether rack. We only have like 10 nether rack left. And yeah, we got some stuff out of there. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so this is, I decided to move all of our different ore chunks over here and the chunk pieces. And I guess I can move these back to our main chest. Yeah. So really, the only thing that we should have over in this chest is stuff that's ready to go, ready to use, and that we use often enough. Um, and then all like the ore pieces and stuff are over here, things that we're not using so often. Like the prosperity shard, we'll use it eventually when we can get into agricraft, or I guess mystical agriculture. That's going to be after we get to land and do some other things because of kappa mode. Um, but anyway... So we're starting to run out of room. We have a lot of ores to process. And as we saw before, I've been putting them into our furnace over here and smelting those down. Uh, we can upgrade our furnace one more time. Let's go and do this. Emerald furnace. 
And if we look at the uses, yeah, we can see that it goes into an endist furnace. So we need eight ender pearls to do that. So let's go ahead and grab this guy. And we should have the ender pearls by now, which I'm pretty sure we do. If I can find them, there they are. Yeah, so we can upgrade this. And so that's going to go from a cooking time of 60 to a cooking time of 30. So essentially, we're going to double the speed of this furnace, which is already going pretty quick. And it's already pretty efficient. But yeah, we're going to double that again. So that is pretty cool. All right. I guess I'll just throw it down right there. So unfortunately, this one isn't transparent like the other one. The other one looked a little cooler. But you know, whatever. It's fine. It's better. It's faster. It's stronger. Uh, let's grab some of this charcoal. We'll do that. We'll do this. And I am not going to put these in here because we have very little of this stuff. We need this titanium. Uh, but like the iron, let's go and throw a stack in there and see how quickly this goes. Oh, that is really good. That is nice. That's super, super nice. Okay. And then on one tiny charcoal, we are doing how many? About a little over six, it looks like. Yeah, that's really, really good. I like that. Okay. So we'll just let that cook down and then I'll try and remember to keep putting these things in there. Uh, yeah, so titanium or chunk? We look at the uses. Can we smelt it in the smeltery? That is the big question here. It doesn't look like it, actually. So if we put it into the crusher, we can double it. If we smelt it, we only get one. Uh, oh. What is this one? That's the pulverizer. We don't have access to that yet, or at least I don't think we haven't made it yet. We don't have any power. The grindstone would double it if we did the astral sorcery, but that's only an 85% chance that we could double it. I mean, I guess that would be okay if we made that. I don't even know if we can make this yet. We need marble, which we don't have. Yeah, I'm not sure we can do that just yet. I don't want to jump into astral at this point. Uh, crusher we can't do because it requires power. Furnace, crusher, all requires power. Alloy smelter, uh, sag mill, manufactory. Okay, this would probably be the easiest way eventually is the nuclear craft way, but yeah, we don't have access to do that. So it doesn't look like we can double this ore at this point. I don't think, right? I mean, if we made the crusher, if the crusher is easy enough for us to make, is that one of our next upcoming quests here? Uh, let's take a look. It doesn't look like it wants us to make it, but again, that does require power and we don't have power yet. Huh, maybe I'll just smelt one. I Well, hold on a second. Let's go back and take a look at this quest. The MV requires a coil as well. And you get 16 copper coils for one titanium. Okay, well, now that I know it's 16, it's really not that important that we double it, I suppose. So let's grab that. We will put one of those in there. Then I'll grab a stack of iron again, smelt all that. Okay. Yeah, so one titanium, that should make us a whole lot of these things. But we need to get ourselves eight copper wires. Now, the copper wires are made from a copper plate plus the shears or engineer's wire cutter. And a copper plate, is there a way for us to make that easily? We can cast out a plate. We can do it on the crushing table. I think we were looking at this before and we could not do it because we needed zinc. Uh, let's take a look at zinc one more time. Was there a way for us to get this in any easy way so there is a zinc ore chunk and you get that from sand sifting sand so we might actually have zinc and i'm just not aware of it let's do this we do not have zinc okay let's go back uh zinc ore so the zinc ore piece that's from sifting sand on an iron stiffened mesh, you get it at 16%. I guess we just have not sifted any sand yet. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Uh, we don't have any compressed sand, but we do have some loose sand. So I guess I can come over here and do a little bit more sifting and see if we can get ourselves the uh, zinc ore pieces. Now, it did seem like it was a uh, pretty high rate. So we should be able to get it like fairly quickly, I would think. Uh, let's put that over here. All right, so we just got to do this like, what, three or four more times and we should be out of sand. Man, I really, really, really want to get the efficiency and fortune upgrades for the sieve meshes. That makes it so much better. Like, everything goes that much faster. Uh, I think I just saw zinc and then my... What is my inventory doing? <laughs> zinc or piece. Here we go. So there is three of them. Okay, so we have zinc. 
Well, I think we needed three, right? Let's go back to the quest book. Uh, that one. Wait, was it this or we were looking at it? Was it? It was making the copper this crushing table. So to make the crushing table, we needed three zinc, uh, some kind of plank slabs, and an anvil. I think we have everything now. I'm not gonna bother. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna bother or doubling the zinc. So let's take that out of here and we will do this. We only need the three pieces and I guess I'll grab some more iron to throw in there. And iron, cool. Yeah, man, we got so many different ore pieces and all this stuff. Do we have room for everything? It looks like we do. Titanium, Ardite. Okay, and now we're getting Electrotene, which is interesting. Uh, we can compress that down. Do that, very good. Okay, yeah, so I really do want to go through here and smelt everything and then blockify and things like that. And we'll worry about that as we progress. Uh, but anyway, so let's grab our anvil. We'll grab two planks. I don't remember where the anvil is, right here. Anvil, two planks. We need three stone slabs. And there we go. Okay, so we should be able to make the crushing table now. Fantastic. Do we get a quest complete? We do. Nice. Now, to use a crushing table for a magnetic craft, I believe we have to use a magnetic craft hammer. I don't think the other hammers that we have work. A steel hammer, I guess we could do that if we really wanted to. Uh, that is four iron, in, or four steel and two sticks. And stick stick. Okay, let's make the steel one. We'll just do the, the big boy. And I guess we'll just throw that here. Okay, so... In order for us to do what we wanted to do, we have to make copper plates, which means we need to smelt down copper, which I don't think we have done at all yet, but we should have copper, not a whole lot. Maybe it would be best for me to take this stuff and double it over in our smeltery. I think I'll take a little bit of time and do that. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so we have, I don't know, nine blocks remaining in the smeltery here. I think it's time to upgrade. Um, as much as I like standing here and watching this spout pour, or I guess faucet pour, like extremely slowly and then waiting for this to cool down, I think it's time that we automate this. And like I do, one of my favorite mods is in this mod pack, which does require us to have some ender pearls. Actually, I guess we just need one. Uh, we are going to do translocators. Yes. Translocators are probably one of my favorite mods in modded Minecraft. Uh, they are just so good. What they do, they do really well. And I am a big fan of things doing what they do well, doing well. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and move on. Uh, so we need to smelt that down. We'll get ourselves red alloy. And we need one invar, three planks, and four cobblestone. Three planks. Uh, and then an invar, I think we already had that. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so back to the liquid translocator. We do this and uh, this and uh, that. So there's the one piston that we need. So now we need two iron, four redstone, a lapis. Two iron. I have iron all in my inventory. Two iron. Uh, two lapis, four redstone. Was there anything else we need here? One ender pearl. Okay, so now we should have everything ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, we also want to upgrade that. So we'll put a piece of glowstone, uh, redstone. We're going to need a lever as well. So I'll grab a stick out of here and we will grab cobblestone from here. Okay, so let's make this so much better. Like, this is so good. You guys are, if you haven't seen this before, you're going to be amazed. Okay, so we'll get rid of this thing. It's all old and busted. We're going to do translocator here, translocator here. We're going to put glowstone. Actually, I need glowstone on both sides, I think. But glowstone there is a more important one. We're going to put, oh, you know what? We do need redstone on both sides, and we need glowstone on both sides. Let's just go ahead and do this now. Uh, so two redstone and one more glowstone. Yeah. Okay, so we want to make sure that they are affected by redstone. So redstone, redstone. And then we want the glowstone so they can do stacks at a time or buckets at a time. 
Anyway, it's faster with the glowstone on there. And then we're going to put a lever right here. Now, the most important thing is we want to right click this button. And by default with it off, we want it to be going this way. Now, when we do the lever, it immediately fills this up instantly. You can see how it's going this way. If I uh, flick the lever, then it sucks it back out of there and puts it into the smell tree, right? Yeah, this is so good. So that pretty much instantly fills that casting basin. That is way better than waiting about 15 seconds for that faucet to try and fill it up. It's just so bad. Uh, another thing that we're going to want to do is to get ourselves a hopper so we can automatically extract out of the casting basin. So we'll do this, this, that, and one of those. Okay. And then I just need to remove the block underneath the uh, casting basin here very carefully so I don't fall into the void because that would be bad. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where that hopper is pointing. It'll hold five stacks worth of stuff, which is way more than what we need. I can't remember. Yeah, you can access it from here. Now, I could put a chest here so it automatically extracts and puts it into a chest, but that doesn't really matter too much. But yeah, this is going to make the smeltery so much better. Uh, if we get a way to automatically insert stuff, then I will be more, uh, more willing to use a smeltery and not... Uh, well, I guess use it to ore double instead of just smelting in the normal furnace. But yeah, this is so good, guys. Look how fast that is. So good. Okay, so we'll let that go do its thing. And now we can get ourselves... I think we need eight copper. Turn into plates, and we're just going to do it this way. So right-click, and then right-click. Yep, that's all you do. Right-click the copper on there. Right click it a bunch of times until it turns into a plate and then you take it off the table. And I think that's it. Oh, you don't even have to switch. It it automatically knows to pull that item and put it on there. Okay, very good. So there is eight copper plates. So the copper wires, again, engineering, engineer's wire cutter plus that. So this and this, there's our copper wires and uh, do we need eight of those? I felt like we needed eight of those. Yeah, we need eight of those for the copper coil. All right, so we do one of those in the titanium, and there's our copper coils. So then we take one of those copper coils and put four copper wires around it. So we need to do this just a few more times here, get four more plates. Awesome. Okay, so now we have the plates. We do that and this. Very good. One of those for these. And there we go. There's the LV wire coils. Cool. So now that we have that done, we need to go back into here. So we need to do the MV ones, which requires us to have electrum wire, which means we need electrum plates, which means we need electrum ingots, which means we need to go into our... Can we do electrum in the smeltery? Or do we need the alloy kiln? Looks like we might actually need the alloy kiln in this mod pack, casting, let's see, molten electrum, smelting, melter, alloying. Oh, okay, why is the alloying looking like this? I'm not sure. Well, it looks like we can alloy it in the furnace, or I guess in the smeltery. So let's see if we can go about it that way. Let's grab some gold from here. We'll do nine of these, and then we need silver. We have silver in here. We do. So we'll grab nine silver, nine gold, and we will put that into the smeltery, and hopefully those will alloy together. Now, when you're alloying and you have the translocator thing on here, you want to make sure you turn that off so you're not, like if one of these melts faster than the other, it'll just extract that out immediately, and then you won't alloy, right? So yeah, you definitely want to turn that off. Looks like the silver melts faster than the gold. Yeah, we want them to alloy in here, and then we can extract them and then turn them into blocks. So let's just wait for that to happen. We'll be right back. All right, guys, don't let the HV wires fool you after doing the LV and the MV because they do require two different materials. It's steel and aluminum in order to make these things. Yeah, two steel, two aluminum will get you four of these. So we just made the aluminum plates and the steel wires. Okay, and we should be able to do that, and there we go. So that should be all of the things to complete that quest. Oh, yeah. We're going to claim that. I think we had some other ones to claim here. Epsilon for doing the crushing table. We'll claim this. 
Uh, we have Zeta. We'll claim that one. That's going to give us engineering blueprint, crafting components, metal press molds, and then some RAK. Uh, do we have any? Yeah, Alpha has some. The Endus Furnace. We'll claim that as well. And I'm looking. There's Icon down here for Row. We got this one for Certus. Claim that. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, the, which one was it for the crushing table? Epsilon. So yeah, crushing table. Now that we have that complete, it does look like that we can do some of these other ones. Another shelving unit. I've seen this used before. I don't think I've ever personally used it myself, but this is a really good early game storage. And I think we might go ahead and make this. It says each shelf level will accept up to eight vanilla Minecraft chests. Right click schematic on the ground to begin constructing the multi-block. So we have to make the shelving unit and then we need these iron great machine blocks. So I think that's probably gonna be the next thing that we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and put these away. Yeah, our inventory, our storage is not looking so great right now. Like we got this stuff in my inventory that I have nowhere to put. <laughs> yeah, kind of a problem. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Get rid of that search and get rid of these. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Okay, so shelving unit. So to make this guy, it is just a piece of paper and one iron bar. Okay, so we can do that pretty easily. Iron bars are made with six iron. And then we have paper. Okay, so let's do this. One of those, one of these, one of those. So there is the shelving unit. I think it's probably gonna end up going here, but I don't remember what the size is. So let's just right click it. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five by two. Well, that's not really gonna fit here. I don't think one, two, three, four. Yeah, it'd have to go out of bounds a little bit, which I guess isn't the end of the world, but we can expand out the center thing by one block and we can make it fit on one side of the path. But it is just something to note. Let's just go ahead and build it and see what it looks like and get this going. Uh, so it says expected iron grate machine block, and then we need, I'm not sure what this block is here. Maybe that is just a shelving unit, that piece of paper I put down. Okay, uh, so back to the quest. This one is to get 14 iron grate machine blocks. And those are iron bars around stone gives you that. Well, we need four recipes. And it looks like we're gonna have to do one more recipe of iron bars, I think, to complete that. So let's grab four of these. That. Yeah, that's only 12. All right, so we'll grab six more iron. Make some more iron bars. There's that, this, and those guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and place these down. For some reason, I thought you could right click on them and they would go where they want, but those are just complete ghost blocks. I'm thinking, oh, what's that mod? Uh, Advanced Rocketry, I think is what it is, where you put down the schematic and then like you can actually just fill in by right clicking on the ghost blocks. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. Uh, so, did it not say we need 14 of those? Well, the, the quest asks for 14, but we obviously need more than that. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13 more. Well, dang, that's not enough. Let's see how many more we can make with the iron bars we currently have. Probably, again, not enough. Yeah, we can do 12, and then we gotta do one more recipe, I think. Let's just fill these in real quick and see where we're at, just to be double sure. That guy, that guy, that one, that one. Yep, we need absolutely one more. Okay, well that's easy enough for us to do. Iron bars. And there we go. So, okay, so you can right click on it and there you go, you have the shelves. Now, I believe you right click chest. Yeah, it says add chest to increase storage. Now you have like three separate levels of storage, even though this kind of is one big multi-block, like each level is different and separate. So that is something to be, to take a note of, I guess. So you can right click a chest on here, right click a chest on here. Yeah, then you get a little bit of storage space for every chest that you add. So I think now's the time where we just make a whole bunch of chests, right? 
I honestly don't know how many chests. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then on the top, okay, we made 10 too many. So if we right click on here, can we like put items like this to kind of see how much space we have? Oh my goodness. That is a lot of space and it's searchable. It's like, it's almost like early game applied energistics, right? Man, that is so good. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let's just take all these items out of there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna break this down. We're gonna reset it up over here. I'm gonna move all this stuff and move it into our new storage system. Yeah, that's really good. I wonder if this does work with like applied energistics. If you could put like a storage bus on here or something, I honestly don't know. I've never used this particular thing before, but yeah, like I said, I do know each of these levels of inventory are completely separate. So you could put like your mob drops up here, all of your random stuff and your ore stuff in like each different chest or however you want to do it. So that is really good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move some stuff around and we'll be right back, guys. All right, well, here's the shelving unit. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. I did expand out the base, this little center area of the base, I guess, the cobblestone area a little bit more so it fits in here perfectly and it's not in the way of our, of our path. And that's what we're looking like. So... You can right click on any one of these and it brings you to whichever shelf that you've right clicked on, but you can also press these buttons here, it looks like, to move to the different shelves. But a thing that I've just discovered, this button right here appears to like filter things down. So things on the top shelf will come over into this one and if there's any room left and things on this middle shelf will come down. So all of my organization kind of got wiped out and I thought that was gonna be like a real big problem. But as I just discovered, so you see gunpowder here, we got some gunpowder here, and we got gunpowder right here. Uh, if I'm down here and I search for gunpowder, it shows it from all three different shelves. That's right. So it doesn't really matter where you put stuff in here. If you're using your search, like you can just think of this as applied energistics, I guess, uh, with no crafting grid, obviously. But yeah, like this is just raw storage space that's searchable. So even up here on this top level with nothing in the inventory, we can search for things on the bottom level, which is fantastic. This is great. I absolutely like this. So I just went, I put some things in my inventory uh, down here on the ground, trying to move things around a little bit. Um, yeah, so I really like the way this is right now. It's not like, I mean, it's interesting to look at, but it's definitely not something that I want to keep late game. But for now, this is really great storage. Uh, so yeah, this quest is now complete so we can come we can claim our RAK, which is fantastic. Now let's go back to the immersive engineering section here. Uh, let's see if we can start knocking out any of these other quests real quick, like voltage connector. This is probably something that we should do since we made the LV wires earlier. Let's go ahead and look at doing that. So that's gonna require some copper and terracotta, iron and terracotta, and this one is aluminum and terracotta. So terracotta is just smelted clay, and I don't think we have yeah, we don't have any clay. Do we have dust? We don't have any dust either. Sand, gravel, cobble. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and grab some cobble. No, not that, this stuff. I'm gonna grab some cobble. We'll hammer that down into gravel, then sand, then dust. And then we will make that, well, we were using this over here to do that, but I don't think we're gonna do that anymore. I think we will uh, move that operation over by our infinite water so we can easily convert dust into the clay. But anyway, let me go ahead and do that and we will continue on. Okay, so I moved the hoppers and our wooden barrel over here to make clay over in that side. I don't think I ever even talked about that. I did move our plants from the center area over here by our infinite water. Yeah, I did that before I started this episode. I think I forgot to even mention that at all but yeah we do have our uh our hemp seeds over here they are a five four five they have grown twice since last episode but they have not grown at all during the recording of this episode but anyway so yeah that's our clay making thing over here and i think we are ready to go to make the three different types of power connectors so let's do the lv wire connector we will do the mv1 and we will make ourselves the HV wire connector. Awesome. So that's all pretty simple. Just required us to have that terracotta. 
And yeah, so now we have another quest complete. So let's go in here, we will drop that, we'll drop, I guess we go into this one, drop this stuff. So R-A-K, we are at three, and just under three and a half stacks. Oh no, we have 10 more. So we're just over three and a half stacks of R-A-K. So we are doing pretty good. We're pretty much kind of saving up for the flight totem uh, at this point. You know, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before. Let's take a look at the ability bottle. Uh, you can take your currently equipped abilities and put it into the ability bottle by right clicking on it, selecting it and moving it over. You get your XP back. So I think it's free to do this back and forth. So we're at 13. It's just underneath this hunger haunch, right? So if I do that and then bring it back again. Yeah, so you get your XP back uh, for taking these things off and putting them back on. Uh, but yeah, as you have them equipped, if you look right here, you can see that my hunger is in fact like going someplace. Like I'm not doing anything, but it's eating my hunger right now. And the more abilities you have, including the different tiers of the abilities, the more hunger it uses. So if you get rid of all your abilities, you can see the little hash thing behind the hunger haunches isn't moving anymore. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Like if you AFK with having these things on, your hunger will go down and you will die. Now that didn't happen to me, but I did look over and I had like two hunger haunches left. I was like, oh crap. Yeah, <laughs> so just something to be aware of if you do AFK uh, with the abilities active. Yeah, you don't wanna do that really. You wanna turn them all off. There's also an ability that gives you saturation, which if you have the saturation one on, that fills up your hunger, and in that case, you'd be able to AFK. But until you get that one, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and call it an episode for today. Yeah, it is that time again, unfortunately. But yep, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.